If you are an artist or independent musician hoping to one day grow a massive fan base and even make a full-time living doing what you love, then today's video is for you. Hey friends, Graham here from TheRecordingRevolution.com and I am so pumped to share today's interview with you. I recently sat down with one of my dear friends, Peter Hollins, a fantastically talented person, one of YouTube's brightest stars with over a million subscribers and hundreds of millions of views. He's a consummate pro, musician, singer, songwriter, producer, engineer, home studio guy. And in this interview, he pulled back the curtain on some of the special sauce of how he has grown that massive fan base, how he makes a full-time living doing music, including the tools and the techniques he uses to actually make money. And then we take a look at his home studio and some of that will surprise you what he's actually using. And then we even unpack one of his recent productions from raw tracks to edited tracks to final mix so you can hear a home studio production as it evolves. You wanna take notes, you wanna watch this entire interview, it is so valuable for you as a musician and I'm thrilled to share it with you so please sit back and enjoy my interview with the one and only Peter Hollins. So today I'm joined by one of my good friends Peter Hollins. Peter Hollins is a YouTube celebrity. I know he probably doesn't want to hear that that terminology but the guy has over a million subscribers on YouTube. Super talented vocalist, really really nice guy, makes killer videos including one of my favorites which is Ed Sheeran's I See Fire. With that shadow on the ground I Hear my people screaming loud And I see fire Inside the mountains I see fire Burning the trees I see fire Hollowing souls I see fire Blood in the breeze I see fire And Peter and I have gone way back um, because we both are acapella nerds. I don't know if some of you guys know that. I try to write about it, but it's not usually that relevant to many of you. Uh, and Peter is really good at what he does with YouTube. He's grown a massive fan base. He serves them well. They love what he does. And he's able to do music day in and day out for a living full time because of things like YouTube and other platforms. So I wanted to bring him on my channel today to share some of his secret sauce with you all because you're independent musicians. You love making music. And many of you are asking, how do I grow my fan base? How do I get more uh, people to know about my music? And how can I make a living doing what I love as a musician? So Peter, thanks for hanging out with us today. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. I'm so excited to be here. So can you tell us real quick what's something you're working on right now that's super cool? Yeah. Um, you know what? I am about to release a, uh, a video I've been working on for many months, uh, which is basically uh, Taylor Swift's last album, uh, the entirety of it in four minutes, <laughs> which sounds super dorky. But I've actually recently became a huge fan of hers because of what she's been doing for independent musicians and I've learned through people that she's actually a brilliant really sweet person and her last album was really cool so yeah. I'm stoked about it. Yeah my daughters don't stop singing her album. Um, maybe we can dive in a little bit to that later on because I want I want to show people kind of how you do what you do but um, awesome. let's talk about uh, what you've been able to accomplish and how YouTube has played a huge part in that. Can you just basically describe to people what you do for a living? Yeah I'm um, well I get to I get to make music for a living. I get to sit uh in my my garage here and in my uh in my jammies and and uh make silly a cappella syllables um day in and day out. I mean truthfully most of my time is spent uh doing social media and networking. A very little of it is actually music. That's probably not what most people want to hear. So yeah, so that's that's huge Peter like it's it's this is what I want people to know is how you can make great music all day long and so many of my, my followers are super talented. I mean, they're really good songwriters, they're really good arrangers, they're really good at actually recording music. Um, the stuff they send me blows me away, but what they're stuck on is how do I get more people to hear it? So right. talk about how it's not just, okay, I've got a bunch of songs. How do you then get that into a lot of people's, you know? Absolutely. Listeners? So, I mean, basically what I try to explain to people is that content is king, right? Uh, but distribution is queen, and if you don't have those two things together, um, 
then no one's ever going to listen to your music. And distribution could be any number of things, right? It could be your inner circle of friends that you inundate and spam because you are so proud of what you've created. And if you've created something that's shareable, um, then it can, it can bypass just your inner circle and go to the next circle. And then if it gets shared again, then it can go to the next circle. And that's when you start getting things that are much more uh, viral in nature, even though I hate that word because people misuse it so much. Um, but, but in the end, you need to create something that you love. And, that, and, and if you do, if you truly love it, chances are there's going to be a community of people out there that also enjoy what you're creating. But your, but your goal as a musician this day and age is to find those people. And in order to do so, you need to work your tail off. So you've created the best album and the best song. But if you haven't found the way to get that heard, whether that be through inundating uh, writers and blogs to, to listen to your music or uh, through social media, um, then, then no one's ever going to hear it. And the best way this day and age to have your music heard is to have a visual component. And the best platform to put that music out there is YouTube. It truly is the best place. Um, and now as we move forward, there's going to be other platforms that will be also being used like Facebook and I mean, got countless other sites. But YouTube is still the hub. Yeah. what you should always be concentrating on. So if you're a musician that is only focusing on being in the studio and then going doing bar gigs, you're stuck in the 90s. So when people maybe see your videos and they hear you talk about video creation, they might think, oh, that's a whole other thing I got to do. Like, I, I'm good at making the songs, but like, I, you know, your videos nowadays, I've, and I've followed you as your whole journey, are, are a lot of them are beautiful, high production, on, on location stuff, Thanks. costumes, I mean, awesome, cool stuff. They're, they're really, really good. But they weren't always that big. I mean, I, I remember your very first videos were a lot simpler. Um, can you talk about how that didn't hold you back when you got started? Oh, absolutely. It hasn't hold me back from the beginning because because in the end, you just need to be on the platform because the platform distributes to the world and it does so you know, for all of eternity, theoretically, right? We're creating something that can live on well past our lifetime. Now, it doesn't need to be the highest production quality content. I mean, tru truly people engage with th things that are the most genuine and authentic and organic. And truthfully, that could just be you sitting there on, on a one shot, you know, with like just like one 50 millimeter lens singing your song, even live or, or your lip syncing to your studio album. It could be just a one shot. People want to feel connected and establish a relationship with the people who are making music. That 13-year-old kid on his smartphone wants to be able to establish a relationship to the person they're hearing. And, and the, the thing that I always tell my peers is, is that moving forward, we've kind of programmed society to have a... This, people don't want to hear this, but we've kind of been programmed as a society to expect... Um, to get to know our musicians. And what I've been telling my peers lately is that they need to be able to open up as much as they're comfortable, their personal lives and interacting with their audience because in doing so, they will only create a better bond with their community. And I think with that in mind, having these very authentic, genuine, organic videos, even if they're just one shots, or two shots, but it's just performance oriented. I think those are the best way to begin relationships with fans or what I like to call them supporters. And um, I wouldn't start any other way. I think if you're an, you're an artist and, and you're trying to start with like the old school MTV thing of being like all artsy fartsy and you have all this B-roll and you have this entire other storyline with your music videos. If you're starting that way, you're basically creating this... Um, separation between your fan base and you and I think that that no longer works I think now moving forward in the future we need to be able to be comfortable with that one-on-one -on -one direct conversation with our audience and I think in doing so you will find a fan much easier and someone that would be willing to share your music so going back to sharing create visuals that are organic and genuine and I think um, in doing so, that will be your distribution element because the queen is distribution and the king is content. So if you, the viewers of Recording Revolution, 
already know how to record amazing music because Graham is the man. Um, you need to have that other distribution element. And I think it, to do so, you need to be comfortable uh, putting yourself out there, sending your music to everyone you know, but doing it through a visual element on YouTube. I think that's the key. Oh, I love it. I love it too because it's nothing you said focused on like it's not about production quality that's kind of what i wanted to get to it's it's like that's missing the point of oh i gotta have the best looking video that the secret sauce isn't the quality of the video the secret sauce is is way deeper than that it's what you just described of connecting with people and and giving them something authentic and real and that's what's so beautiful about the age we're in um i love it so people probably they're you know asking okay that's great and all i can make maybe i can make videos and maybe they get shared but how do I make money? <laughs> like, how do I, how do I, because, and I love how you call your fans supporters because it's the whole idea of, of artists were supported by wealthy patrons and people back in the day. So, because people value art right. and artists are busy making art that doesn't usually provide a big enough income. So how, how in this day and age are you using, what tools are you using to be able to generate an income so that you can be freed up to make more art and share it with your support? Absolutely. Terrific question. And one that, everyone wants to know. I think uh, this day and age, more than any other time, music has um, no longer been valued for what I think it, it needs to be. I mean, music has value. Um, and unfortunately, we've kind of taught the younger generation, you know, our age and younger, that, that uh, you know, music should be free. And, and that's something that we're constantly going to have to fight against for probably decades and generations um, because what we create does have value. And, and there's people out there who believe uh, that as well. And um, one of my main sources of income now is a site called Patreon. Now you bought up uh, patronage, um, and that has been the way art has been um, funded for centuries. And now through crowdsourcing, um, you know, my art, and, and you're on Patreon as well, um, creators alike, whether it's art or film or music, um, can, be, um, can be funded vis-a-vis -vis amazing sites like Patreon. And Patreon is like a 95-5 split. They create this like open sourced um, website that basically is you having your own subscriber uh, type monthly payment. Um, and so basically, I have about 1,450 people who are giving me, you know, four or five dollars each a month that literally pay for my entire production, um, every video I do. Um, and, and that's my, that's my first step because people always say, well, I will never be able to make a living doing this. And you don't need to have millions of followers. Yes, yes, I have millions of followers, but, but truthfully, those 1,450 people are the only people I need to pay my mortgage, to pay my insurance, to make my music, to make my music videos, and, and to not rely on anything else. Um, and, and you can create that community of people on any social media network, in any community worldwide, and you can set up your own direct funding mechanism with your fan base. Um, and I think sites like Patreon um, and other amazing platforms that are coming out of Silicon Valley are allowing us creators to create for a living and inspire others to do the same and no longer needing, you know, the man to tell us, this is good, this is acceptable, I'm going to play this on the radio. Because moving forward, that's, that's no longer the future. I mean, the future is hundreds of thousands, if not millions of creators making a living supporting their families, not turning into like huge stars like Taylor Swift or Ed Sheeran, but being able to create for a living. And I think in doing so, that is the only way we can make the world a better place by creating music, by creating art and inspiring others to do the same. Dude, I love it. I love how you zeroed in on what, what is the goal. And the goal for a lot of these independent musicians watching is probably just to be able to live to create their music, you know? Maybe they want to shed a day job. Maybe they want to shed a multiple part-time job. They want to have more time and flexibility to, to do more of their art. They, they tell me if I only had, I think that's one of the biggest things I hear. If I only had more time, Graham, I could make my music. These platforms, Patreon, and a lot of them are allowing 
people who are happy to pay you a few bucks a month because they feel like they're directly supporting you, um, they're happy to do it because it allows you and these people to do what they want to do. And, and it's not to become a star in the old sense, it's to live. And, and, and that's, that's a huge goal, to live to make your art. So can you, you're a home studio guy. You've been making yep. music out of your bedroom and now you're in, in your garage. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Can you, can you share with us a little bit about what your setup is? I think people would want to know, like you do all vocal music, but you, you do incredible productions. What kind of gear are you using? What's your setup? How's it evolved over the years? Yeah, thank you. You know what? I, I, started, I started in a closet with an NT1A, a Rode NT1A. I started in the closet with a Rode NT1A and I started recording acapella groups, you know, having them be in the closet singing into the mic. And I started picking up, you know, some larger condensers and I picked up, I have a, I have an unreleased uh, Telefunken AK-477 and there's only 12 of them out there. Uh, wow. One of our, one of our colleagues, Bill Hare, that we both know, helped me uh, get in touch with them and I got an unreleased mic and I've been using it for a number of years and I love it. Um, my main amp that I'm using now is a Millennia STT-1. Um, which has like a vintage side and a solid state side uh, of it. So given the fact that I only have one instrument to create an entire song and to color my voice in different ways, I always change between solid state and vintage and uh, the proximity I am from the microphone. Uh, you know, if I'm singing bright or singing dark or, uh, you know, doing, I sometimes I'll, I'll take, Dozens and dozens of takes just to different like color color my tone, um, but I've been working in Pro Tools from the beginning. Uh, I loved Pro Tools Seven, so I've never updated since then. It works for me. So basically, my rig wait, is offline. Wait, wait, you're still in Pro Tools Seven? Yeah. Thank you for saying that because everyone talks to me about like you got to update. Don't you have to update to the latest thing? But every studio I've ever worked in, they're still on version seven or eight or six, yeah. or their computers are 15 years old. <laughs> it's like, What's I, I, I honestly think, you know, no offense to that company, but they had it down pat in the, back then. And I was like, well, I'm happy with it. I'm not updating. So all of my outboard gear, like my TC Electronics reverb and everything, like if, if I were to update, it no longer works. So I'm like, well, I don't need to update it. Um, so I have like a super, super old computer running it, like an, a quad Intel that's like nine years old. You know, I, I only use I only use these open eared AKGs like the the K two forties that are like ninety nine bucks. You can get them sometimes for like seventy nine on sale. And you know, I I only record myself, so I only really need one channel strip that's like pristine. So my my one really good mic that I use, I sometimes switch depending upon what I'm doing. Like I have you know, like a Rode NTK and I have some Audio Technica 4040s and sometimes I even use the NT1A still. It's quiet, Mike. It's super it's cheap. Great. It works great. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm still just using Pro Tools LE with like a, a 003 mixing board. Um, you don't need a lot. I mean, it's not the gear. It's, it's how you use it. I know that that's so stupid because I'm sure that's something that you tell your people all the time, but it's, it's the truth. Thank, thank, at least they heard it from somebody else for once. So <laughs> it helps, helps out my cause. It's, what's crazy is that your, your level of productions have only seemingly gotten better over the years. And it's, you're on the same, same DAW, same converters, same computer. But when you started this thing years and years ago, it's cool to see. It's, cause it's because you've gotten better. Can we, can we dive into your, one of your most recent projects, the, the Taylor Swift song? Can yeah, you, absolutely. I would love for people to hear... Because especially with all vocal music, can they he give them a little taste of what it sounds like from concept and arrangement to the raw tracks? Because they hear the finished thing and it sounds it sounds better than a full band, like real drum kit, real guitars, real keyboard. Like it sounds legit. So they're like, how, how does that happen with voices? And so a lot of these people, they know about recording, but they'd probably be interested to hear that progression. Anytime I go out a song, I, I conceptualize from the beginning, you know, is my, is my audience going to enjoy this? And most of the time I actually take the requests from my audience. So I already know that hundreds of people like it. And then I, and then I think, how am I going to share this? Is this a shareable song? And so when I went to uh, Taylor's new album, I was like, oh, I like this song. I like that song months and months ago when I, when I finally wanted to do it. I was like, oh, I can't decide. 
so heck, I'm going to do all of them. Um, so, you know, we conceptualized a way to do Taylor Swift's 1989 album on one, uh, you know, fail swoop. So, like, I started putting uh, tempo sections together that made sense, you know, Bad Blood, going into Shake It Off, going to I Know Places, because that was right around 80, 160 beats per minute. And then Welcome to New York, I Wish You Would, How You Get the Girl and Clean, that was more around 116, 120. And, and, and basically just that they flowed well, right? Uh, and then I sent that to my arranger who helped flesh all that out. My workflow is one in which we work in finale. So he finalizes the arrangement, sends it back to me. I throw it up on my iPad in front of my, my mic, and I basically just start sight reading the parts into um, Pro Tools from the bottom up. You know, I'll, I'll wake up early in the morning because I'm a tenor one, but I can croak out low C's. Uh, for a good 20 minutes in the morning. And so I know if I wake up, I don't speak, I go right to the mic, I can sing like a bass, you know. That I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of more of like a tenor already because I've been talking a lot. But, <laughs> um, and I'll start working my way up. I do all the background parts. Let's let people hear, real quick, since you're hot talking, let's let people hear what like that raw, the raw oh. recorded tracks. Is that cool? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, take a listen to this. Hey! Um, so that's an example of exactly what it sounds like when I haven't done anything to it. Like I've literally just put reverb on the master bus, which you shouldn't do because that's ridiculous. But uh, you <laughs> know, when totally I'm just done that, when I'm just trying to listen really quickly, um, I do that. So that's without tuning, without editing anything. It's just exactly as it sounds as I record it. Um, and then the next step, and what you actually helped me with years ago, is I, I sent it off to an editor to help. Uh, you know, align my rhythms to do some tuning if if it needs it, which it needs it occasionally. And uh, and then it sounds like this. And so like we've talked about that whole process, raw tracks, tuned and edited tracks. Let's give them a taste of what that all sounds like and looks like in a finished product with the new Taylor Swift medley from Peter Hollins. Cause baby now we got bad blood. You know what you said? It sounds awesome. I love it. As always, I'm blown away. Um, kind of a one-man show in terms of everything that you're able to do. And uh, you're a great example of the recording revolution, someone who's just taking what's affordable these days and just making a career out of it, which is awesome. Um, Thanks, any final man. words for people watching in about, again, going back to maybe promoting their music, taking all that stuff you were talking about with YouTube? And What would you say to someone right now who's listening who wants to get their music out there? Yeah, uh, just to summarize it really quickly, um, you want to aim for regular videos. Um, you know, you want to complement those videos with more videos. So you want to regularly upload 
I would say one music video a week, which sounds like a daunting task, but truthfully, that is the best way to gain traction and, and, and start a fan base. Um, you want to give your video the best chance with accurate thumbnails representing what you're doing, uh, you know, metadata where you type in the tags of the songs. Um, um, so you, you, you have like a, a good title, so you have your, your main, your main uh, song name farthest to the left, your, your best tags in, in the description first. Those are always searched, uh, used the most in the search engine, the things that are farthest to the left and the first tag. So keep that in mind. You want to collaborate with other musicians as much as possible. Um, analytics are your friend. Um, there's like a Creator Studio app on iOS and Android that you can download to keep track of you know, your ad revenue, uh, your audience retention rate. Um, there's also even more analytics on YouTube you can look at. Um, most importantly, out of all of that, you don't want to just upload, but you want to interact with your audience. You want to respond to every single comment you get, period. Um, you know, and then just don't expect to grow a worldwide fan base via YouTube overnight. Like, you know, perseverance is the key. And so make sure you love what you're doing because not everyone's going to be able to make this work as a full-time living, but you guys can make something work as, you know, a part-time hobby and make some form of revenue. I know you can. Um, and lastly, just for the th what I truly believe in with all my heart, money isn't the only value to get out of relationships in the music world. There's so many other amazing ways to provide value for people you run into um, from knowledge, uh, you know, collaboration. I mean, it's just don't just focus on money. Money isn't the answer. You know, money is a byproduct of your passion. If you focus on your passion, you will succeed. I love it. Thanks for thanks for sharing your experience, your expertise. Go follow Peter Hollins on his YouTube channel. Just click over there. Go subscribe, follow, watch the latest video, the Taylor Swift medley. It's awesome. I'm pumped for him. And if any of you Hollins family guys are here from me pushing you here from the Taylor Swift video and you want to learn how to record, I have been telling my friends and my peers forever to go check out Graham. He is filthy awesome. He, has, he provides so much great content. I have links on, on my site to his site, but all of his links are down below. So please follow him. If you want to learn more about recording, subscribe to this YouTube channel. He's a great guy. He's got an amazing family. Support this guy. And also, man, go to the site. A lot of you YouTubers just live in YouTube land, but I have an entire site with all sorts of extra content, and I always want to push you to my insiders list. Join the list. It's free. Put your email in the box when you get there. You're going to get an ebook on the number one rule of home recording, which is just going to blow your mind. It's so simple. And then I have a whole video series called The Smart Start to Mixing, which talks about the first 30 minutes of your mix, how to set it up for success. And it's all free. It's all there. Most importantly, have fun making music. Don't let limitations hold you back. Be a great content creator. Add value to people's lives and have fun while you do it. Have a great week. We'll talk to you in another video soon.